this opportunity. And uh, my subject is about the modular space of stable shift. So if you, if you are interested in the CZZ, maybe you can sleep, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, during my talk, C will be irreducible, smooth, projective curve of genus G will be equal to 2 and always over complex numbers. Yes, that's safe. And I will denote by SUCRL the moduli space of semi-stable bundle, vector bundle of rank R with determinant L over C. And since I'm, in, I'm interested in the case when R and the degree of L are not co-prime, so as a first example, I will fix R to be 2, and I will fix L to be the canonical line bundle. So our moduli space is this. And since when G is equal to 2, this moduli space is known to be P3. So I will always assume that G is greater than or equal to 3. And this moduli space has the natural stratification called the uh, Brunet de Locas. So let me use this notation, WR. WR is by definition the closure of the set E, which is stable in this moduli space for which H0E is greater than or equal to I plus 1. I remember that Professor Lange mentioned that this plus 1 doesn't make sense, but this is my old habit, so please <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> yes. So from this, from this, we have a natural stratification. And this will end at the G plus 1 step. So when E is a stable bundle, semi-stable bundle, stable bundle, then there is no stable bundle for which the zero cohomology is linearly independent R plus a G plus 2 sections. Now it is well known as Professor Lange mentioned that the dimension of this is 3G minus 3. Whose theorem is the emptiness? Uh, uh, you can find the proof of this fact in the paper by Oxbury, Pauli, and Priviato. I think in 1997 or 8. Yeah, but it's quite simple. Yeah. <coughs> I think they every genus or yeah for every genus. Okay. Yes. Now, for, as far as you remember, Bertram proved that W zero, which will be denoted by W, this is the hyperplane section. This moduli space, which is tangent, which is tangent to the Kumo variety, uh, the Kumo variety of Picard G minus one C along the Kumo, the Kumo of the theta divisor of this Picard. So here, the hyperplane section of this means that SUC to KC, this moduli space, is embedded into some ambient projective space PN by the two theta divisor. And by this embedding, we can consider the hyperplane section. And then this W is the unique hyperplane section of this moduli space. 
tangent to the <coughs> some <coughs> Kumo variety. And I will, uh, this is not important in my talk, so then let's just forget it. Now, my study is mainly on the geometric description of this brunette locus for some genus. And the idea is as follows. So the basic idea is that when we think about the moduli space of stable bundle or stable shapes on the algebraic surface case, the philosophy is that the geometry of this moduli space <coughs> inherits a lot of properties of the base variety. So if some curve, this curve C is embedded into some algebraic surface S in a unique way, in a particular way, then we consider some moduli space of stable shapes over S of some stable shapes, stable shapes with some numeric invariant. And then take the element here in M and then restrict to C. And then E restrict to C, like if E restrict to C lies in the moduli space as mu C to KC, then we have a map from this to this moduli space. So we expect that we can derive some geometric facts about this moduli space using the geometry of this moduli space over algebraic surface. So from now on, let me fix the genus equals 3. And C is non hyperbolic So since C is non hyperlyptic C is embedded in P2 by canonical linear system. So when we think about, so from this, we can consider the restriction of PK from N bar 1K to CUC to KC where n bar c1, c2 is the moduli space of semi-stable shapes of rank 2 with chunk classes c1, c2 on p2. So this map is given by sending an element E to E restrict to C, which is E tensor with OC. So here, in this map, we fix the first term class 1 because this embedding is canonical, so which means the canonical line bundle on C is the pullback of the P21. To one. If you take the pullback of this line bundle to C, then we have canonical line bundle. So we have to fix this first chunk class to be 1. And this moduli space is meaningless if k is less than 0, less than or equal to 0 by Bogomolov inequality. So by Bogomolov inequality, if k is less than or equal to 0, then this moduli space is empty. So we can always assume that k is greater than or equal to 1. And in, in the following, we will assume that second chunk class k is equal to 4. So we consider the map b4 from m bar 1, 4 to this moduli space. And if we twist every element by here, every element here by OP1, 1, 1, and here by OCKC, then we have the same map B4 prime from M bar 3, 6 to SUC. 2, 3kc. Now the proposition 
is that this map p4 prime is dominant. Which is, is, which is equivalent to saying that P4 is also dominant. <coughs> so the proof is the follow, the proof is as follows. First, let E be a general stable bundle in the modular space with triple canonical line bundle as a determinant. And then, for this vector bundle, we can consider the determinant map lambda e from h zero e to h zero three k c. And as a first step, we can prove that this map is injected. Uh, this map is surjective. So what does this mean? So this means we have a map from C to Grassmannia H0E to E sending point P to the fiber of E at point P. And this is embedded into this projective space by plug embedding. And this fact, this subjectivity, means that we have injection from P H0, 3 K C star to this projective space. Right? And we can do more. So C is embedded into P2, P H0, K C star. And this P2 is embedded into this by triple balance embedding. So this is P9. This is P27. So you can actually say that this map is embedding. And a second step, you can find five-dimensional sub-vector space of H0E such that the restriction of this determinant map, lambda E, to this, to H0-3KC, is actually isomorphism. So what does this mean? This means we have a projection from this to Grassmannia V52 embedded into by clock embedding. And this is also P9. And this is projection. So this second step means this composition is actually isomorphism. step is that here. So we have a map from C to this class Maria. And this P2 is embedded into P9 by triple Evanese embedding. And P2 intersection with this class Maria, this class Maria contains this curve C. And in fact, this P2 is embedded into this class Maria. So, so we have a map from C to P2, and P2 is embedded into Grassmannian V52, and it is in P9. So the composition is the triple variance embedding. So we consider the universal quotient bundle Q By construction, we have Q 
So let's say this is V3. V3 pullback of Q restrict to C is our original bond E. And then if we denote by ES V S star Q, then this is a bundle on P2 with chain classes 3 and 6. And in fact, you can prove that this bundle is stable. So which means ES lies in N bar 3, 6. So this map is dominant. So as a quick corollary, you can say that <coughs> Yes. The stability follows, isn't it, that's the question, it doesn't it follow from the fact that if you restrict to the curve, it's stable, so it has to be stable before? Mm. If it would be is unstable, it, you, would get, you would get in... in uh, ah, so you mean if you restrict unstable... Unstable, then you get it something now. unstable. That, I, so, I don't yeah, know, so. you think? Oh. Then, mm -hmm. this is redundant. <laughs> No, but the dominance is not ah. And in fact, it's not uh, not even clear that if you restrict, you get something something stable. You get something stable. So that's what you prove. Mm -hmm. it's it's not redundant at all. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and as a corollary, this modular space is unirational, which is really well known fact. So it's really also a shame that I write down this, but this is. Quite yeah, meaningless I, to me. <laughs> so this is due to Klaus Huli because he proved that uh, n bar three six is rational using the Monad description. Actually, so this is a really well-known fact, but by this dominance, we can give another proof of this unirrationality. But in fact, we can say more. Due to Dolachev and Kaprano, there exists an open Charisky <coughs> subset N bar one four whose points correspond to the logarithmic bundle associated to six lines on P two in general position. So what does it mean? So on P2, when we have six lines in general position, meaning there is no triple point, then we can assign a shift E, H, let's say this arrangement is H, and we can assign a shift E of H, which is a shift of differential one form, with logarithmic poles along these six lines. And in fact, if this arrangement is in general position, this is locally free. And when we have six lines, then we have chain classes C1, C2 is 3, 6. So we can use this fact to our setting, say, let's fix five lines in general position. <coughs> and a point P in general position. Then
So we have this picture, one, two, three, four, five, and a point. And then we can think about P1 family of six lines as follows. So five lines are fixed, one point. We can choose one point in general position and then rotate this, locate, rotate the line passing through this point. So we have one dimensional family, in fact, P1 family of hyperplane arrangement so we have a map from P1 to N bar 1, 4 sending an arrangement A to the logarithmic bundle associated to this arrangement and twist by negative 1 and then by, composi by the composition with the dominant restriction map to the, this moduli space, we have a map from P1 to this. So we, have, we can find some rational curves on this moduli space. And since the restriction map is dominant, we can find an uh, arrangement H such that E H twist by negative 1 restrict to C is E for general E in this modular space. So whenever we have a general point in this modular space, we can find some six lines on P2 maps to this point. And then, let's say we choose two general points on this modular space. Then we have another range, we can choose another arrangement of six lines on P2. And then, for example, let's think about this line and this line. And then they meet at one point. And then think about P1 family of hyperplane, hyperplane arrangement obtained by rotating this line around this point. So we have a map from P1 to this moduli space whose image containing two points which are this and this by this argument. So we can do the same thing for the other five lines. So we can connect to general point on this moduli space by six rational curves. And in fact, we can identify the degree of this rational curves. So if you think about this P1 family arrangement, there are exactly ten special there are exactly ten arrangements in special position. So for example, if you think about the intersection points of five lines, we have ten such points. And then when this string line passing pass through one of these ten intersection points, then we get triple point in this arrangement. So for example, when this line rotates and then it may intersect, it may contain this intersection point, then that arrangement has triple point here. So in that case, since this position is not general, we cannot say this logarithmic <coughs> shape is locally free. But still, we can Think, we can think about that animal in this picture and then we can prove that for that arrangement H E of H twisted by negative one restrict to C has non-trivial section. 
So that this element, by definition, lies in the Brunet locus W0. And as I said, this W0 is the unique hyperplane section of the modular space, which means this curve is degree 10. So we can say more. Then after that, by six rational curves of degree 10. And we can do some more game with this. For example, let's fix four lines in general position and fix one point on this plane and then rotate two lines around this point. Then we have P2 family of arrangement And yes, P1 cross P1. Oh. <laughs> P1 cross P1 family of arrangement. So by that, we have a map from P1 cross P1 to this moduli space. And then we can composite this with the restriction map. So we have some surface which is image of this. So by that we can. But in the case, this two line can be can it coincide, right? Yes, yes, yeah, that's right, that's right. So in this case, in this case, uh, so actually we can take the quotient. So this is actually P two. Yes, P two. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So in TP2, we have a cone for which two, these two lines coincide. So, but we know that this map is, this is two dimensional, so this map is not defined at uh, zero dimensional locus, right? So I, I cannot say anything about this, but I expect that there are six special arrangement which is two lines coincide and these two lines pass through the other six intersection points. So I guess there are six points on this cone and we <coughs> expect that this rational map is not defined on this six point. So by blue up we have a nodal cubic surface. So we expect that this modular space contains on over nodal cubic surface at every point in general position. Yeah. And the reason why we are doing this argument is because of the following question. So SUC2KC is known to be the cover quoting. in P7 and one of the big, biggest problem in this area is that is the cover quarter rational or not and we expect to get some idea to attack this problem by this way. So for example, we can consider six dimensional family of arrangement of six lines mapping to the common quality by rationally. And plus, if this family is rational, then it will automatically derive the rationality of the cover quality. So this is the idea, but this is still far away from, yeah, from the end. So, so let me finish.
the argument on the cobalt cortic right now. So as a next case, we can think about <coughs> the genus four case. So do you know the universation? Yes. 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 Yeah, that comes from yeah the previous argument. Yes. And when genus four case C is embedded into P three, and there exists the unique quadratic surface Q inside P3 containing C. So we can, let me denote by M H bar C1, C2, the Mosley of semi-stable shapes of rank 2 with chunk classes C1, C2 on this quadric Q with respect to the ampline on the edge. And also we want to think about this moduli space. So because of that, we have to fix the first chunk class to be OQ11 and H to be OQ11 also. And for E stable in the moduli space M, H, C1, C2, we can assign S E, which is the set of hyperplane in OP3 for which H is 0, E, negative 1, restrict to H, restrict to H, is not 0. So the proposition is that S of E is a hypersurface in P3 star of degree C2 minus 1. Here, we always assume that C1 is OQ11 and H is OQ11. And for, for a hyperplane, section H, for which this is not 0, we can define some quadric CH, which is Q intersect with H, this is called the uh, jumping conic of this vector bundle E. And so S of E is the set of jumping conics of E. And this proposition tells us that this set of jumping conics forms a hypersurface in P3 of degree C2 minus 1. So for example, C2 equals Two, S of E is a hyperplane in P3 star. So we have a map so we have a map S from N H C one two to P3 star 1, which is P3. And in fact, we can prove the theorem. The map S can be extended to a morphism S bar from M, H, C1, C2 bar up. This is a subset of M, H, C1, C2 bar whose points are locally free shapes. 
So this map S can be extended to a morphism S bar from this moduli space to P3 and S bar is an isomorphism. And we can do the same, we can apply that fact to the restriction map. So we have a restriction map V from M bar C1 2 to SU C2 KC. And if you take an element here, E, and the image in restrict to C has three linearly independent sections. So the image of B, the image of M bar C12 lies in W2. And the proposition is that the map B from M bar C12 to W2 is dominant and from the previous theorem we know that this moduli space is isomorphic to P3 and this rational map, this rational restriction map is given by the complete linear system IC3, which is the ideal shape of C, is a subvariety of this P3 and twist by 3. So from this, we can obtain the fact that W2 is Donagi Izadi <coughs> cubic 3 4. by definition. Uh, why is that? So if you think about if you look at N bar C12, this has two parts, N C12, which correspond to the locally free shapes, and D, which is non-locally free shape. And let's pick an element E in D, non-locally free. And if you take the double dual, then we have to follow the exact sequence. E to E double dual. And we have some stru structure shape of zero-dimensional subscheme of Q. So G is zero-dimensional subscheme. And since E is stable, you can say E double dual is semi-stable. And in fact, you can prove that E double dual is isomorphic to O01 plus O10. And since the second chunk class of this is 1, so the length of Z should be 1, which means Z is a point on Q. So we have a map E to E double dual to OP, where P is a point on Q. And in fact, you can prove that for a point P on Q can produce a unique non-trivial uh, non-locally free non-locally free shear fitted into this exact sequence.
So which means n by c12 is equal to n c12 plus the divisor corresponding to corresponding to Lone locally free shapes. This is isomorphic to the quadratic Q, and this is P3 minus Q. And here we can divide this the element in D into two cases when P is in curve C or not. So first, if P is on C, if you take the tensor <coughs> by OC, we have a map, we have a, we have a sequence E restrict to C, E double dual restrict to C, OP, and then here we have some torsion part, so which implies that E restrict to C is not torsion free. And second, if P does not lie on C, this part will vanish. So we have E restrict to C is isomorphic to E double dual restrict to C. So this is O01 restrict to C plus O10 restrict to C. And these two bundles are the two trigonal line bundles on curve C, let me denote by G13, H13, so which means E restrict to C is G13 direct sum with H13 such that G13 tensor with H13 is OCKC. And it can be easily checked that this element can be considered as the unique element of the Brunel locus W3 in this modular space. So again, if you take a look at this restriction map, the map from P3 to some Brunel locus is not defined on C because on C, this restriction is not torsion free and this map sends other points on Q to one single point one single point, this so P is not defined on C mapping to mapping Q minus C to a single point And from this fact, you can actually show that P is given by the complete linear system of IC twist by 3. And that's the definition of the Donagi Izadi cubic 3 fold. And actually, I forgot to say this. In the beginning, I assumed that Q is smooth. which implies that these two trigonal line bundles have different pencils. Okay. In fact, the fact that the fact that W2 is isomorphic to the Donagi Izadi cubic 3-4 this one was proved in the paper of Oxenberry, Pauli, and Priviato in 1997, I guess. But the proof was really technical to me. So at the moment I read the paper, I couldn't even understand what it is. So, yeah, I think, yeah. This one is quite natural, but really easy, but that the original proof was really technical and it's really beautiful. And remark, one remark is on the case when Q is not smooth. So IE, C is embedded into Q and Q is embedded into P3 and Q is a quadricone. 
So in this, in this case, what we can do is to consider the Hilchberg surface F2 with the section sigma such that sigma squared equals negative 2. And let's say F is a fiber of this Hilchberg surface to P1. And then let's denote by OAB OAF OA sigma plus BF. And CC is embedded, embedded into P3 by canonical line bundle, canonical linear system. Our, if we think about the moduli space of stable shapes on this Hilchberg surface, our C, uh, our C1 should be A sigma plus 2F which is the linear system defining this map to P3. And the natural choice for H is also this. But the problem is that this line bundle H is no longer ample. So which means we cannot define the moduli space of stable shapes. Right? So in this case, we can do some detour so we consider parameterization of some extensions. So P is the set of extension, which is 0 to O10 to E to O02. So this is the set of extension. And in fact, you can choose a unique shift E from one extension. So this is actually a set of shifts admitting this exact sequence, not the set of extensions. You can, the, the proposition is that this P is isomorphic to P3. And second, P contains a singular, uh, a quadric cone D, whose point admit the extension. 0 to O, 0, 1, to E, to I, P, 1, 1, where P is a point on the Hilchberg surface. So, so which means when we choose a point P on Hilchberg surface, if P does not lie on the section sigma, we can choose, we can generate one unique sh one unique vector bundle E which fit which is fitted into this extension. If P is on sigma for every P for every such P we have only one uniquely determined vector bundle E which is fitted into this extension. So from this proposition we can derive the same result by the same way W2 is Donagi Izadi cubic 34. Because because for for an element in this quadri D we have this extension If you take the tensor with OC, we have the following sequence. So O01 restrict to C is, as I said, 
that's G13, the trigonal line bundle on C, and E restrict to C. And this becomes, so this first part, first part about the section, this has nothing to do with the intersection with C. So we have again G13. And if P, if P does not lie in C, we have this sequence. So which means E restrict to C is in the same equivalence class of G13, direct sum with G13. That's also the unique point of W3. And if P lies in C, we have, uh, ex we have a sequence E restrict to C2, G13, tensor with OC negative P, G13, tensor with OCP. So E restriction to C is not stable, is not semi-stable. So the map from this parameterization P to W2 is not defined on C and maps every element of Q except C to a single point, single unique point of W3. W3. So by the same argument, we can prove that W2 is Donagi is a three form. And for higher genus, Actually, I didn't do any work about this, but the good news is that when the genus is equal to 6, due to Mukai, we can find a quintic perpetual surface in P5 containing this curve C. So somehow, we can think about the moduli space of stable shapes of rank 2 on this quintic perpetual surface and then restrict, consider the restriction map to SUC to KC. And we expect to get some geometry about this moduli space. But the problem in describing this moduli space is that at least I do not have any tool to describe this moduli space. In the case of P2 and in the case of smooth quadri, we have a Bellinson theorem. So for P2, we have real well-known Bellison theorem. But and on Q, the smooth quadri, we have a similar statement due to Buchta. Due to Buchta, <coughs> we have a Bellison type theorem on the vector bundles on Q. So using that, we could obtain some statement on the jumping conics on the vector bundles on Q and get derived the fact that the moduli space of stable shapes of rank 2 with some numeric invariant is isomorphic to P3. But here on quintic perpetual surface or in general <coughs> blob of P2 at several points, we don't have such a tool. So that's another challenge. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the